Hey, what is up, y'all? It's Combs, and I'm back on another one, man. So today we're gonna be reacting to what's what now? Trevor Noah and the Baby Part One, man. I don't know what it's about. I just saw the video of Trevor Noah. Shout out to my bro and the baby. Shout out to B Dot. Ew. Hey everybody, so today I'm having a conversation with the hip hop artist The Baby. What's up, Trevor? There was a point when The Baby was What's literally up, the Trav? face of hip hop, one of the biggest artists in the world. He conquered all of the hip hop stages and Bro, all, the... all I know is that Trevor Noah is about to talk a lot of sense. I'm sorry for pausing. Way to the yeah. Grammys, he was killing it. Until one day, he made statements at the Rolling Loud Festival, which many people deemed extremely homophobic, and everything in his career changed. The baby is one of the hottest rappers in the game, but after making some wild comments during his Rolling Loud performance, major celebrities like Elton John and Quest Love have called him out, saying his actions are ignorant and homophobic. The baby is doubling down on his seemingly homophobic and disturbing remarks made on stage at Rolling Loud in Miami. Now, since then, the baby has still been a performer, he's still been an artist. Still being poppy. And many have asked the question, has he learned, has he changed, and what has he learned or changed from that experience? Well, today, we're chatting to him about all of this. This is What Now with Trevor Noah. What Now with Trevor Noah, let go. Oh, this is Trevor Noah's show, bro. What's going on? If it Happy is, podcast, shout out hey, to Trevor. How you doing? I'm yeah, fine, things are oh. I'm fantastic. Me and Mandem's having a great time, blood. <laughs> that nigga Can got Can I tell you something? I think I'm going to move man. to London. Uh, no. yeah. I'm having the time of my life. I just love it. What part are you staying in? All of it, blood. All of it. <laughs> I got bare mans, innit? <laughs> so I've been riding, I've been riding the, the tube to my shows. Um... Which, you know what's strange, is like Trevor everyone Noah's in, in London tells you to ride the tube, yeah. but then when you ride the tube, everyone asks you why you're riding the tube, which is a very yeah. strange thing. Literally, I'm, I'm on the train every single day going to my show, and then people are like, what are you doing here? What are you doing riding the tube? And you're like, well, it's the fastest way. Yeah, but I didn't expect you to be riding the tube. It's oh, an that's experience. so strange. Oh, what are you, what are you doing here? <laughs> and then one guy's with me on the escalators coming up sure from the, the underground, now. and he goes, Yo, Trev, I thought they gave you more money than to ride the subway, bruv. <laughs> what? <laughs> but I love it. It's been, it's been fun. You know, I, um, so I was in Ireland for a day. Uh, I love the Irish, man. They just have like a... I don't know what it is. They, they have a, a thing that connects them to us as South Africans. Oppression. Really... Oppression and colonization. You see, I wasn't going to say it, that, Christiana. I was looking is. for something more... I wholesome. love the Irish. But they've suffered, so that's why we get on. <clears throat> I like the Irish too. Scotland and Ireland, I feel like it's a full... They feel like 100% my people who just live somewhere else. That's how I feel. Mm. And the Irish are the least uncomfortable with a very uncomfortable story. You yeah, know? I can see that. In fact, Ireland was the first place where I ever like told stories about apartheid in South Africa because... I was talking to a comedian and like some audience members we were at a comedy festival and one of the one of the comedians was was chatting to me and he's he's like so tell me a little bit about your life trevor like what, what have you done where have you been and i was like oh this is how i grew up and this is what i and he goes my god why why aren't you talking about any of that on stage and i was like well because it's depressing it's this is i'm talking about apartheid and racism and he's like that's the most interesting thing you've talked about trevor He's like, our audiences would love to hear about that. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I, I went on stage the next day and I told some of those stories and the audiences loved it. And so I, I'll always credit the, um, the, the, the Irish for, you know, being the people who encouraged me to just explore the less obviously funny parts of life and the less comfortable parts of living. Because I, I think, you know, that's comedy encompasses all of it. Life encompasses all of it. This podcast encompasses <laughs> all of it. That's why we're here, people. That's why we're here. <laughs> the good, the bad, and the ugly. I mean, Shout look out at to this the today. podcast, the man. Ooh, the baby. Yes, this is an interesting one. Should Christiana, this is how I know you are, my bro. friend. Truly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that you, you'll roll with me, and, and you, you, you have both a judgment and a love and an understanding for me, regardless of some of the decisions I make. Yes. I mean... I I trust it will be okay in the end. Just like I trust you'll do a good The Baby interview, even though I have 
some reservations. Well, yeah. But I trust. I'll, I'll roll with you on it. That's why. Well, okay. Mean. So, so here's here's the thing. Some people listening to this podcast have no clue what a da baby is, and if you're one of those people, um, I actually hope you will listen because I I think it's a it's a fascinating compass conversation that goes beyond his art, and and the music that he creates, and. I think there will be parts of the conversation that will be very tough, you know. Um, the baby has not lived an easy life, nor has he grown up in an easy world. And I think he's been part of making it not easy at times. Um, and if you do know the baby, some of you might love him and go like, "Oh, I love him and his music." And some of you might be like, oh, "I cannot, I cannot stand the baby. I, I, I hate everything he stands for." And that's I don't know. just being I, a hater, bro. Like, literally, I, I, I that's often find just, myself wrestling. That's just being a pure hater. If you do not like the baby, the baby made a big impact to the game, bro. Like, straight up, bro. He did the wildest, sh the wildest thing. Not anyone can do it, bro. The baby did that thing. Let me try to turn in my camera. Yeah, he did that thing. Thing in life with the question of forgiveness, reconciliation, and the conversations that we have with people who have either wronged us or wronged quote unquote society. You know, and one of the things that interests me about the baby is you have someone who has definitely I mean he's he's definitely, you know, hurt people but he he seems to want to make amends and sometimes I feel like he doesn't necessarily have the, the, the tools or the exactly or the aptitude They're but not he has giving a willingness him the and I'm a sucker for willingness. To do that. Yeah. I no, know he that. has the platform. Yeah, They're not giving him the yeah. Willing, he, you know what I mean. I don't yeah, but I think he's but I think he's I don't know about the willing part and I'd love to learn more. I, I would say that before you know all of his controversies. I I was a big fan of the baby. I, I still think he's so talented. Yeah. Just the music is brilliant. The music videos, just so artistic. So I came to his music as a fan, and then I think perhaps it was fame, perhaps it was environmental. But you know, a few things happen back to back, and you're just like, oh. And then you know, it kind of culminated in the incident at Rolling Loud Festival yeah. where he was he was quite homophobic very publicly even though the crowd seemed to be enjoying it <laughs> which what was going on in that crowd but you know and since then he's kind of been a pariah but he's I think he's coming back into public life and um, there are some people that feel he, he hasn't been accountable enough I'm intrigued by how people get to where they are and what informs not just the decisions they make, but the but the people they become, and and the baby's one of those people. Because I loved what you said, you became a fan of his, and then discovered things. And I sometimes wonder how many times people are or aren't given grace because we don't know what we don't know about them. Yeah. And then when we do discover things about them, they're lucky enough that their past or their or their present doesn't sort of catch up to them. You know. Yeah, and it wasn't just his kind of comments. He also has kind of this history of violence. And I do want to say that sometimes... The thing is that the violent thing, it's how we grew up. It's how we grew up, bro. You can't... If You, you think if you grew up in an uh, environment where, like, they never took all our, our shine? Yeah. You think if you grew up in a lit environment, he was going to be this... Um, I feel like it's environment, guys. Don't come for me, but yeah, if you're from the hood, man, it's who way, man. You 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 moving how how the hood move, bro? Cause like if you lacking, bro, that's weird. This is not to absolve him for any responsibility for the things he's done, but that's how much judging. is that linked to how we grew up, right? That yeah. is that where the violence come from? I'm curious the about that. The violence come from. Think we live it, in a world it was even before that. Are able to get away with things. It was even mm -hmm. before we that. To no consequence. We, but you know, who knows what consequences are not violent, bro. It's what we see, we do. Because of it. The question I would have is: How willing is he to grow? Does he want to grow? Does he need to grow? And then, more interesting for me is: What is everything 
that has we affected him? We are people him? alone. Like, like what are the ingredients that have come together to create the baby and, and who this human being is? That's what I'm really interested to get into with, with the baby is, you know, who is, who is the human being yeah, you all gotta behind know. the actions? All right, Joe, let's, uh, let's jump in with the baby. Let's see, let's see how this goes. Eh. Noah, y'all. I can't wait. Oh, oh. The baby. We got the baby in the building. Pleasure to be here. Appreciate you. I think for this conversation, what I really wanted to get into is understanding you as a human being mm -hmm. to understand a lot that about you as the artist. Absolutely. Voice, you know, you, you've bro. had an outsized yeah. influence on the world. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, someone who has 21 mil million followers just on your Instagram. But, but what your music has done, mm -hmm. what, what you've embodied, I think, Big goes far impact. beyond that. And so let's, let's, start with, let's start with that. I'm always intrigued by how an artist chooses their name and what that name means to them. Absolutely. Why the baby? Well, I'm the youngest of three boys. My mm -hmm. mom has three sons I'm the youngest sibling out of the um out of the three sons and not only that like He's the last early boy. on early on I um I had the name baby Jesus okay and this is as a local artist you know what I'm saying but my mom didn't feel she didn't feel good about that name you know what I'm saying <laughs> a lot of people they like no absolutely not no no but I'm like you know my whole thing with it um was like my my purpose being you know to do for others uh -huh. you know what I mean and not myself so that's my responsibility you know what I mean on this earth like I would love to know what your family was like and and why that has been such a driving force in your life so you were born in Cleveland Cleveland Ohio. right mm -hmm. raised in Charlotte North Carolina so what mm -hmm. moved there when you were seven years old yep was there a reason you moved? Was it was good? Was it bad? Oh, yeah, it it was a great thing. I'm, I'm, I commend my mother, you know what I mean, yeah. for changing our environment, the situation, even though Charlotte itself is a, you know, it, it's not a walk in the park, you know what I mean? Not at all, like not even a little bit. What was your mom like? Like, what, what was she strict? Was she a disciplinarian? Absolutely. Was she a, yeah? Absolutely, but also fun, loving, nurturing, right. you know what I mean? Like, all about her sons, like, all about her sons, her I remember her her email was my three sons Linda like everything is my three sons my handsome son she's all about just uplifting us so she was proud of you from the beginning absolutely especially right. me like I got the smile like her the two dimples like I, <laughs> I I resemble her the most my brother don't get mad at me to my brother y'all got mad at me enough growing up but like I'm my mother's twin you know what I'm saying right, like, right. sweetest woman on earth yeah. you know what I mean like I'll give you the, the, the shoes off her feet, you know what I'm saying, if okay. you didn't have them, even if she didn't have another pair to put on. How, how did she punish you? I, oh, she... T like, if you did something she wrong, whooped our ass. She's African mama. Excuse, excuse, excuse oh, my leg. She, 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 she whooped our ass. You know she got it. She's African mama. Like, what, what was the worst whipping your mom gave you? Oh, man. Um, like, I, I, rem I remember mine. The two that I hated the most was... I had two types of whippings that my mom would give me. One was the chasing whipping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that one was one where I was I was trying to get away and she would just she would just follow me. It was like a tornado coming after me. <laughs> and then the other one was, I, I, like I always I, I tell my mom till this day I go that was like a, it's like a war crime. She would send me outside to get a stick to from pick a, a switch. You, you call it a switch. Call it a switch. You Absolutely. Call it a switch out here, right? Absolutely. Yeah, right she would now. send me outside to pick my own. Wow, they call it being switches a that side, bro. Like switches, as in, cause I I thought that switches were just uh, those uh, switches in set in Glock, but they uh, Mama used to whip y'all switches. God damn! Yeah, they it, it's uh, a pop stick. You know what's a pop stick? We call it fufu stick, man, or bell always. Man, my mama even won't put chili in my eyes, boy. <laughs> Compless to her crying. <laughs> well, so you, everyone knows they worst. Like, what was the worst whipping that? That you was one did? of the ones that. Yeah? yeah, that was always. You know, that's like adding insult to injury. You yeah, know what I mean, yeah. uh, you know, especially when you try to find the, the tiniest you little do. stick. Oh, those come are the worst. In, and it's though. like, oh no, go back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, no. And it's like, go back. So definitely the ones with the switch and yeah. the the extension cord. You know, oh, the, the landline. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah. Man, you can hear you it. The extension oh, cord. When you can hear it. Where we learned that from? One thing she always. Where did we learn that from? Because we, we probably weren't doing that before we saw someone doing it. Where did we learn that from? Wait, like she was very adamant on like, trying to pull us in not feeling sorry for yourself. Like, no, like, my, 
when we used to get whoopings, like we weren't allowed to cry. It's, the whooping isn't over Whoa, until you until you, you stop. Cry crying. After wow, so, God yeah, damn. Like, that's it because it's like you know you you know you know right from wrong. You know what I'm saying? How so did how like, did you you know? I feel like everyone has a different experience of this as a child. Mm -hmm. Did you? know why you were being whipped and and and, and so, but but did you did you think that it was right or did you go this is the worst thing in the mo which which way did you go because i feel as there's always two types of kids i knew right from wrong you know and it kind of it kind of you know tickles me sometimes because like with the way that i'm perceived you know what i mean uh by the public like i was the good child in my house like you know what i'm saying in my huh. in my household i was the i was an angel you know what i'm saying like i was an angel so you know I, I say that to say, you know, like the the environment that I come from, the yeah. household I was raised in, like every day, it was like it was war. You know what I mean? Like growing up was a challenge for me. You know what I'm how, saying? How? How? So, let, let's talk about those challenges. Mm -hmm. Like, like, you know, I grew up in South Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, we had our challenges. They're very different, and yet I find in many ways very similar Absolutely. to many experiences that black Americans had. Absolutely. You know, we all have our hood. Mm -hmm. We all have the dude at the corner. Mm -hmm. We all have the dice game. Right. We all have the shootings. We all have... Mm -hmm. it, it, it's strange how familiar and Absolutely. yet how different the worlds were. On different sides of the world. You, you grew up in this world where, you know, you have a mom who, f by all accounts, is, is religious, is driven, Absolutely. is focused, is loving, is also a disciplinarian. Mm -hmm. She's keeping you in check. Mm -hmm. And... She moves you to North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're growing up in North Carolina, I, I, I've read a little on your story. I've listened to some of the, 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 the interviews that you've had. Mm -hmm. It seems like you lived in a strangely hybrid world where, on the one hand, you had a few opportunities, but on the other hand, you were in the streets. And I'd love to know, mm -hmm. how, how did you end up in the streets? What would, like, did you find the streets or did the streets find you? So a lot of those elements, like that you list, like you know, you got the the hoods, the dice games, yeah, this, that, yeah. you got the alcoholics, drug addicts, all of that. One thing with me, and you know, and I and I take my time speaking on this because I I never discredit the the superhero that my mother was yeah. and still is. You get what I'm saying? A lot of those elements, like that, you know, most people have to go down the street to see or venture off or don't go over there, go to places their parents tell them don't go to yeah. see. They were in the household with me. You know what I'm saying? Like we would we would be uh, watched by my uncles, like my uncles who are either uh, alcoholic, drug addict. Right. Do you get what I'm saying? Right. This or that. Right. Like real deal drug addicts. Like not, you know, like yeah, my grandmother's house directly across the street from the crack houses. That's what they call them a crack house. Yeah, so it's damn. it's, you know, drug addicts prostitution 24 7 like they're up from they're up four or five in the morning they're up the entire night out the entire day roaming the streets like a lot of these elements they were like right there but at the so time like growing up it just seemed completely normal to me yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying like that's it's something hard. it's hard though i mean it's yeah. hard you know it's, it's it's interesting i grew up in a very religious household many Absolutely. of the views that i held growing up were mm -hmm. completely shaped by that religion sure. over time they've shifted and they've changed mm -hmm. but that was the core of my foundation mm -hmm. i also grew up in a very african household right so those are some of the ideas that i i, I, I was i held and I, I i maintained and and it's interesting that you've now brought that up because you know you you, you have your dad from afar mm -hmm. giving you wisdom you know contributing to your life mm -hmm. but he is from afar right. you know you have your mom who's working all, all day, all night, mm -hmm. to make your life just, you know, what it to needs to be. Just to keep, meal, yeah, to keep right. a roof over Mama, your head. Yeah, to keep a roof over your head. Love for mom, and, and unfortunately, Yo, you're in It's always the moms that are doing these things, bro. Like, that's why you got to value your mother, bro. Most of y'all, uh, if you don't value your mama, bro, I don't know, bro. I don't know, straight up. Like, you got to value your mother. Because she's the hero in most situations most almost all yeah especially in the kids life and but there's those ignorance mamas out there bro alpha y'all y'all too ignorant bro environment where you're surrounded by drugs violence alcohol Absolutely. you know you, you you can name it i mean people can imagine it but when you're in it it's a very different experience it's, it's extremely different what, there are there are two types of responses to this there are people who will crumble because of this mm -hmm. And there were people who 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 almost be they'll become galvanized by it and they will they will fight within fight it. With i feel it. like you're the latter i feel like you're the kind of person 
who saw opportunities and mm -hmm. saw ways to thrive within that world. Absolutely. What was the first moment where, this is long before you're the baby, you know? I mean, you're, you're baby Jesus, you're the, the little kid in the family, you mm -hmm. know? But And even with that, that yeah. name didn't come until... Oh, that name that, that didn't yeah. come until much later. So you, Yeah, you, much later. That wasn't a so childhood So at this point, you're still John. Childhood, I was John John. You're just John John. John okay. John or so, Hard Chocolate was another right. nickname. Hard you know, Chocolate? Hard Chocolate. <laughs> okay, so you got John John or Hard Chocolate. In the streets, man. What, was, what was the moment where the streets took you? What what was that life? What what were you doing? Where were you going? What, you know, there's, there's a moment where it snaps. I remember the first time I had a, like, um, what was my first encounter with the police? First encounter with the police was my friends and I had, we, we had like a, a, a replica gun that mm -hmm. we had with us. Mm -hmm. And we were stupid, we were, we were thinking maybe would be, Whoa. I don't even know. We were like, maybe we'll be gangsters, I don't know. Right. But that was like our first encounter with the police. Um, I mean, we'd, you know, we'd get arrested for throwing block parties that were illegal. We would, right. But you, you always remember your first, what, what was your first encounter with the police? What was it about? What was happening in your life? I don't even know if the police were involved, but I remember I was in, Nigga I was, was in moving fourth school. grade, third or fourth grade, but I bought a pocket knife to school, and I was showing oh, it off to some girl. Remember, you, should, you know, I brought a pocket. I remember my mama gave me a hiding, bro. When she found my my pocket knife, when what grade was it? Um, I think it was grade four or five, bro. Cause like there was some other nigga, bro, that I was with, bro. If I catch it, man, let me. I got, I got expelled for bringing a knife to school. I'm so glad they didn't expel me. I, oh, I got expelled. They suspended yeah. me for a day. That is wild. I showed it to a girl and uh and, and she told on me they suspended me for a day. Oh, I got expelled yeah. for that one. Whoa, they didn't, she ran it the on knife him. was already gone when she told him. Thank God she waited probably to the end of the day to tell him. Because I probably would have got expelled too. But um and that would have that would have messed up my my uh my little school record yeah. because I was I was straight A's like all the way until like uh, high, I mean, nothing, nothing less than a B for sure. I didn't get a C till maybe high school. You know what? That is one of the paradoxes. Sure. So me. I don't know what it was like Primary growing up where you school, grew up, bro. where we grew up. Was wild, but I found high there was school, a there was a conflict. There was a clash up, between bro. the streets like and school. Blurred. Right. If you did well in school, guys would be like, "You're goofy." There was almost this element of you don't want to do well because right. you don't want to be perceived as somebody. You know mm -hmm. who somebody can step up on, somebody who can right. be you know taken advantage of. It, it, it you are a strange mix in that because you, you were proud of your straight A's, yeah. But you're in the streets as well. Mm -hmm. was, was there ever a moment where violence came into your world? Like, yeah, it was there. It was it existed. Oh, this the is just a daily thing. Time. It, violence was in my world. Was in my world I mean, when I'm three or four. Bro. Like I see like my like it's in it's in the household. Like I see my uncles fighting each other. My Damn. my brothers, you know what I mean? Like with me, like every day, like it was it was like that. Like you know, I was a I was the baby boy. Like I was the one. I did lock me in the closet, bang on the doors, oh, act wow. like it's yeah, act like Jason's here, the boogeyman's here. These types of things, like it's yeah. Like I was, I used to piss in the bed because I was scared to get up to go to the bathroom. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it was that right. type of thing. Right. We we're all sharing a room, but violence is yeah. It was it was very much there. Like while my mom's out working all these long hard hours yeah. like my brother he's Shout he's out to 10 at the time Shout out to Martin Dukes. 20 30 uh, older kids in the house you know what i'm saying like yeah like did, did you ever see a, a lot dead, going did you ever on. see a dead body growing up i've definitely been around so, yeah shootings and, and yeah. yeah all that for sure the first bro, time like, death probably was around. in the hood bro these are things that you see. bro these are things that you see almost every time bro like it's, it's it's normal now. Like the other time we were there, uh, I don't know if it was a month ago, bro. No, but things have been happening. But a month ago, bro, I saw a nigga dead, bro. They chopped him with a machete, bro. Around me. Crazy. Um, a certain situation had happened uh, with one of my family members, and and I just remember it like it was yesterday that we were like sat down and told. When you go to school, because we're little kids, yeah, you don't speak about this to nobody. nobody. Wow. Ever bring this up to anybody? That's the, I literally never have. You know what I'm saying? Like to this wow. day, you know what I mean? But I, that's the first time I remember, it, and I had to be maybe like, um, how old was I? I think I was in middle school. I don't think I was in elementary school. I think I was in middle school, but it was early in middle school. Yeah, had to be like sixth grade, seventh grade. Mm -hmm. 
Sixth grade, seventh grade. Do, do you, do you think you had a full comprehension of what that was? No, absolutely. No, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I knew exactly what that was, but just in terms of violence, like. Were you scared ever? I was scared all the time, huh. every day, but as a child, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. my mom's not at home. And so, and then, you know, like, elementary school kids, they get out of school first. Yeah. So I had a house key at like age six. Like, I'd let myself in, you know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. I'd come home and let myself in, a six year old. You know what I'm saying? When I look at my daughter right now, being six years old, I'm like, wow, like, you I know can't what believe I, mean? like I was going through six, that. Oh, for yeah. sure. And and like I say, it, it didn't feel like I was going through any. It did. It very much did, but it didn't. Like, this was just the norm. I don't know anything outside You're of this. Kid. You know right. what I'm saying? But I, uh, I say that to say, like, you know, when my brothers will come home shortly after, they come in, go right back outside. They leave me. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? They go right back outside. So I'm in the house. Like, that's probably one of the reasons why I'm, I'm just so self sufficient. I had to be. You know what I mean? Like I had to be. Like I, I had no choice. You know right. There are many moments, many moments where you're raising yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Like I'm feeding myself. I'm making yeah. my own food. You know what I mean? All that. I, I, one of my uncles, they have a story that, that they tell us where, because one of my uncles doesn't do drugs, right? Mm -hmm. Hardcore drugs. He drinks. Doesn't do hardcore drugs. But where he tried to, um, where he tried to beat one of my other uncles with a baseball bat because he had Whoa. me with him in a crack house smoking crack. Oh, with them, I was like Whoa. one, Dad. two years old. You get what I'm saying? Whoa. Like these types of things. Like that's what I come from, and it also helps me understand why I'm set up the way I'm set up as a person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's that's, that's fault, fascinating bro. that you yeah. that you have that level of of self awareness to understand how much of you has been shaped by the mm -hmm. world that you were in. And that's newly. This is this is all. These are all things that I'm, I'm beginning to notice. Like within the oh, past really? couple of years, you know okay. what I'm saying? Like how, yeah, like I how, notice how, most of this stuff when I come sit down with people because I've never been to therapy. Is, is therapy even is that allowed in hip hop? I, 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 I utilize question. my yeah. I mean, several people recommend yeah. it too. I, I believe you know it, it's. I believe it's something that would be like extremely healthy for me. That's why I like, you know, I always lean towards like um, interviews, especially like early on, like when I first popped in, in the yeah. mainstream and when I sit down with somebody, you'll get a whole, you'll get so much more out of me than probably like the average person because it's like, you know, I'd walk out of the interviews like, damn, like that's, uh, those are stories I've been waiting to tell. I almost that's forgot about them. Like it right? takes yeah, yeah, yeah. For, you, you, bur know, you to, buried them and then you wait for absolutely. somebody to ask you. That's what I did with my childhood. Something buried out of you. it. Yeah. That's what I did. Right. I buried it. All those memories, like that's what I did. Like, so I know how to like let bury me, things. Yeah, you let, know? Let, me, let me ask you this. As somebody who grew up in a household, and I'm speaking about myself now, mm -hmm. I grew up in a household where, you know, there was a lot of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up around... I was around plenty of that. I grew up plenty. around, you know, uncles who were violently drunk. Um, you know, you, you, you just, you just, you see it. You go through, you go through phases. You're afraid. Mm -hmm. you, you're terrified. You freeze. You, you know, everything you're speaking about, I can relate to. Mm -hmm. And there's also one emotion that you don't realize you're having because you don't have the power to have it, and that is anger. Right. Right. Suppressed I, anger. I, yeah, I, ca I can only imagine there was there was a lot of suppressed anger inside you. For sure. Because you are the baby. There's mm -hmm. a lot of the time you don't have control. Yeah, you got you, sibling rivalry exactly. too. That's a whole different category. Right. So you're dealing with just itself. brothers on their own, but oh, now you're also goodness. dealing with uncles, you're dealing with the streets, you're dealing with a world that brothers is... Brothers who are angry about this same right. world that, right. that I'm living in, but right. they're actually older, older than me and able to process it. It's, yeah. So it's hitting them. You know what I mean? Even harder than right. hitting me. How, how did your how did your anger manifest without itself? the support of a father? Uh huh. That's the difference too. Like I'm yeah. the baby boy, and yeah. I'm the one whose father is in his life at a distance. Okay, okay. So your right. brothers didn't have that. No. Oh, and okay. Growing up, okay. like you can see, like you see the difference between me and my brothers. You know what I'm saying? Do you think that my was the defining brother factor? Committed suicide in 2020. Damn. So when you say, like, I remember, you know, maybe like five minutes ago in the conversation, when you say, you know, like some people. They they crumble or it or yeah. you know these types of, of elements in in their environment and just them, their upbringing destroys them like you see the difference like between you know what I mean how mm -hmm. I dealt with it and, mm -hmm. and you know like what I was able to blessed enough to be able to turn it into as opposed to you know like it ultimately being like my brother's demise you know right. what I'm saying do you, do you think your dad was the defining factor absolutely you think that made the difference absolutely what do you think it was about your dad being in your life even from a distance mm -hmm. that made the difference just always just putting something on my mind and just showing me something different like always like 
always and I don't you know I, I, I'm gonna keep and having to like go back to saying like I can't discredit like the job that my mother did no, no, she did course, amazing yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean because she also has to allow him to be able to do that like right. a mother has to make a way for that to happen you right. know what I'm saying like she has to she has to no, call your father right now. You huh. get what I'm saying? Like she. What, what yeah. was your? What was? Tell me a little bit. Because at about, times I'd stray away yeah. from it. Like I wouldn't. Tell me a little bit about your dad, though. Like, like, what, like, what, what was his life? He was what in was the army. He he was oh, he in was the in the army. military. Mm -hmm. Oh, he went to the army when I was born. Oh, this mm -hmm. is interesting. So he was okay. in the army for like ten years straight until he like injured his foot. You know yeah. what I mean? So he was at all those wars, Afghanistan, Iraq. I'd get the pictures of him. I used to love the pictures father, of him man. with the guns. Uh huh. And, I'd show him off, have him on my wall in my room. I used to write him. That's why I'm such a good writer. I'd write him letters back and forth when he was in the army. He's really at war. I had to communicate with him through letters. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he'd write me. I'd write him back as a child. Like he'd tell my mom, "Let him write me." I'd write him back. He'd like grade my paper, mm -hmm. like like redline it. You know what I'm saying? Like have a. Uh, you know, like uh, punctuation corrections, everything yeah, yeah. all throughout the paper. And he wouldn't even let me like use slang. And he's from that too. He's from Cleveland, Ohio. Right. right. So he's but he you wanted know what I mean? you yes. to be more. When he I'm with him, be, yeah. you know, he'll 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 relax a little bit more with it. And you know what I mean. But while I'm over here, uh -huh. on my mom's side, because it's a whole different, you know. Yeah, it's a completely different cloth over here. Yes, ma'am. Yes, like he, sir. Yeah, like he, like he's very adamant on just making sure, and and it made the world of a difference. You know what I'm saying? What now? This was your second episode, bro. Part two. Okay. <laughs> Your music career is is public. Your music mm -hmm. career is well known, you know. So I, I won't delve into that too much. What I'd love to understand is behind the scenes. Right. As the baby, you start blowing up. Mm -hmm. Your music starts growing. You start building up a fan base. You start making money. You start you start experiencing success. Mm -hmm. What 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 confuses me is how violence still stays a part of your world. Absolutely. You know, it, 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 this is something I've learned changes depending on where you're from and, and the hood that you're in. Is like, mm -hmm. is how you respond to conflict and how conflict is, is, is expected to be dealt with. Absolutely. You know, so. That's the, from, that's the, the. Right. So in South Africa, for instance. Yeah, for in sure. South Africa, we have, we have different hoods, you know. So we had like Alexandra was one township and then Soweto is where my grandmother's from and you have Tembisa, et cetera. And we'd, we'd even know, we'd go like, oh, cats from that hood, mm -hmm. they'll stab you. For sure. Cats from this hood will break a bottle on your head. Cats right. from this hood will, will shoot you. Like we'll even say like, those guys shoot. Right. Those guys stab, know. those guys. But you almost know what type of violence is either expected or, or, or probably Gun going violence. to happen to you in, in those worlds. It mm -hmm. feels like the world you were in was a gun environment. In USA, right? it, it, it was all of the above. above. It was all of the above. Absolutely. So, so, above. so when, you, when you're when you growing up, do you... Obviously, it is all of the above, but USA, they have more access to um, gas. They have more free will to gas. That's why it's crazy. Do you, do you think to yourself, all right, there is only one way I can defend my... Smoke with what, so what, smoke with what, so what, you come kill this one, uh, one revenge, that's how it is, it's a setup, bro, that, and I mean, um, we can't change that no more because us as black people, we have that ego, bro. If it happened, it happened, ain't no turning back, ain't nobody turning my changing my mind I'm doing what I gotta do that's the main uh, mentality with us black people bro. straight into it they myself do you know that there is an ultimate conclusion or, or like how how does the baby exist in this world trying to be you mm -hmm. whilst acknowledging that you're still in Charlotte and you're still because you're successful because now you're an artist the baby like yeah. this is in, in early on like yeah was, not as a child but as an adult okay yeah yeah um I mean one night I I was getting ready to go to the club. I didn't go. Everybody else went. I'm like, I'm tired. I'm going to sleep. I hear the door. Get, uh, I hear, I don't even know this until after the fact. I hear people screaming. That's what I feel like woke me up when I, I when I jumped up. I hear people screaming, where is it? Get down, get down. Where is that? Where is that? Shit like that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I immediately grab my gun, come out around the corner. It's like six people with masks and guns. You know what I'm oh. saying? They're looking through the boxes. I had like different posters with different pictures like I had all my promo material out like in the front yeah 
um, it's like a, a condo, a condo type of apartment where it has stairs in it, and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, what I mean, you can come in the garage from the top, but you don't know that if you come through the front door down here, yep. that type of situation. Maybe three, four bedrooms. Me and my brother were both staying there, and um, I come around the corner. It's like maybe, yeah, like six people. You know what I mean with mask on. This is like, you know, two in the morning. Two, three in the morning, mm-hmm. maybe like six people That's with masks on and guns up, creeping around the corner. Some of them looking through boxes with the posters. The closest person when I turned the corner was as close as me and you are. Yeah. Yeah, when I turned Whoa. the corner, welding a gun, you know what I'm saying? Like creeping, like having it down low. I, I'm the same way when I turn the corner. Jade I, up. Boom, shoot. Boom, bro. Spin back around the corner because this is, I'm completely outgunned. Like it's, like I, I immediately see, you know, as soon as I turn the corner, it's, Several bodies in here, all in all black, all got masks on, all of them got guns. I turn the corner, shots just right, boom, 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 boom. I go out through the top and open the garage to where, because of the side street, to where you can yeah. walk through the grass or the little sidewalk, get to the front That's door. That's traumatizing, I come up right through the top and I come out the garage. If I look to the left, it's literally like right there. I just mm-hmm. have to cut through some grass mm-hmm. and it's right there. And I can hear them, you hit, you hit somebody, you hit, and they jump in the car, pull off. You know what I mean? That's the, the first shooting incident, but whatever. Like it's Charlotte, it's normal. Whoa, 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 whoa. You, see, you say, but whatever. And this is, yeah. this is, sort, of, this is, this is sort of what I'm, what I'm, what I'm trying to understand mm-hmm. and what I'm trying to get to is, I hear your but whatever. But it, it's also not whatever. Do you, do you, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I, what, what I mean by this is, like Don't a few things. Sense. One, you know, Why? you hear the commotion. You hear what's going on. You grab your gun. What, what, what I, what I wonder sometimes whether you think about your life, because I try and think this about my life, and I think many of us don't, is mm-hmm. how abnormal some of our normal actually is. Absolutely. You know, mm-hmm. the fact that you think there's a possibility this is happening. You know, right. Right. the baby's not walking down the stairs going like, hello, is anybody exactly. there? You know what I mean? You, you're I going, knew. yeah, you're immediately like, going, when I, tell story, I know what I it is. Like God woke me up it. Put my hand on my gun. Well, like, there you go. Get out there, type. Right? You know what I'm saying? Right. That, that tells me the kind of world that you're living Absolutely. in to think that that's a possibility. Mm-hmm. You know, the fact that you 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 then go through the motions the way you do tells me that that this is a world where you believe that it's a possibility. Absolutely, day in and day out. Once, let's say, post that event, there's trauma. There's 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 fear. There's everything. Obviously, you have the the fight or flight. So fight kicks yes. in first. Yes. But there's got to be a moment where you go, I'm not safe, or there's got to be, like, oh, the, was, oh, yeah, the bullets, this, the, the return gunfire just missed me. You know what I'm saying? It just missed me. I feel like the, the difference with me, like, I don't, you know, it in terms of uh, how do I deal with violence uh-huh. as opposed to how people expect me to deal with uh-huh. violence. Like, you know, in my upbringing, it's like your only option is to, you know, defend yourself. Right. So you have this world where you genuinely believe, and maybe validly so, that any time anything can happen, anyone Absolutely. can step up to you, anyone wants to test you, anyone. This 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 is an environment that not you're, even necessarily test like. And so what I'm what I'm trying to understand and, and trying to get to in your world is 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 sort of an understanding of this because you see what you just said now is interesting. It is not a test. You're dealing with very real situations. Absolutely. Do you, in this moment in time, do you feel like you're a safe individual? Do you feel like you're like be, you? Do you feel like you're beyond it now? Never. No. Like I can walk outside right now, and anything can happen. Anything. But but who would the anything be, and who would the anybody? And I mean this there, honestly. There's no way. Like I, you know, I'd have no way of knowing. You huh. know what I mean? Like I got literally you, have no. You way think of it's knowing. probably yeah. Pro- wait. But 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 would it be the streets coming back, or would it be what like what is it? What makes somebody do something wrong? doesn't it, it doesn't necessarily have to have anything to do with you hmm. you know what i mean somebody could be having a bad day and you know and and step and trip over your foot accidentally on the way in the store and, and the next because thing you they, know, they it's turn on. around and kill you it turns into a, you know what i mean a fight or a life or a life or death situation you know what i'm saying let me ask you this though based upon what you see is is, is a is a beautiful segue to this question mm-hmm. you are a parent and you're a proud parent absolutely you talk about being a father. Mm-hmm. You talk about what it means it's to you. It's my favorite thing to be. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. And there is, there, is a, you know, there is a valid argument that it is about the environment and it is the world that you're in. Mm-hmm. What is the world that you want to see that you're creating mm-hmm. for your child? Like, what, like what, is, what is that world? A what, world. Like how, and how different 
or how do you make that world different? You know, because I'm assuming Absolutely. I'm assuming you don't want your daughter knowing that as a reality. I'm assuming you don't want your daughter thinking of that as a possibility. Not necessarily. You want it to be aware of it. I'm assuming. Absolutely, and that's the word I was going to right. use. Like it's just being aware of the world that uh-huh. she exists in, yeah, which she, she already is. Yeah. Like when you know, you when, when I got into the situation and a guy was shot and killed in Walmart by me, my daughter was right there. She's right there, one years old. How how did she She's, process that? She didn't. She didn't. Her, she probably doesn't even remember it. Her older brother definitely uh-huh. probably remembers it. You know what I'm saying? He's She's one, so he had to be, what, five at the time. Yeah. He's her age. He was a year younger than what she is now. If she saw it now, she would definitely remember it. Like right, it was just her. right. Mm-hmm. How, but, how did I mean, you, of what course, did you, like it's completely traumatizing. Like it's, yeah. you know what I mean. How do you like how do you speak to your kids about that? You know, what what do you say after that that situation? For real, I don't now. Now immediately after, like yeah, like we, I just pay very close attention to them. You know what I mean? I, I've definitely had a conversation with their older brother. My daughter wasn't even really talking at the time. She was, right. but it's like you but, know, but just with, starting but, to talk. But with your son, though, what's the conversation? It's just more so just checking on him, seeing how he himself processed it and not telling him how to process it you know okay. what I mean okay like not telling him how to process it and you know thank god he was one aisle over from me and he didn't actually see it right so he hears boom 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 and sees an entire you know a uh, walmart store evacuate yeah you know uh, uh fire alarms going off the little siren going off like he sees it you know what i mean he sees mayhem he hears the conversations immediately after when i come back over to check on them yeah like he sees it all you know what i mean he hears he's very aware like he hears people talk about it of course like so then so then if, what, like what happened in walmart like what yeah that i mean that, that's what i attempted to do originally was de-escalate the situation with my words but that isn't you know what the what the opposing side of the situation that isn't what they wanted they had different intentions and that you know that just goes back to like what i'm saying like you never know like i'm a walmart you buying diapers prepared, and, and you know but you don't you don't know this person like, right? no, hell no. from a can of paint i'm in walmart just buying do they know, the shop do they know you? kids baby shampoo shit like that absolutely yeah they know me from being the the rapper from the our rapper. city like the rapper okay this in our city. okay yeah. so okay so that basically. altercation starts off because this person is curious as to what they see you know somebody that has something going on you know like from the environment i'm from the city i'm from like yeah the person who has something going on it's like fuck him like he like i nah, it's immediately i remember seeing like a biggie interview um where he's like yeah growing up like we'll see the person drive by with like the nice car yeah and the, yeah the jury and it's fuck that nigga i kill that nigga like yeah that's how it is like you know what I mean? Like people, you know, they yeah, they target you know success. Nothing, a lot bro. of people with not with nothing to gain. Uh-huh. Like I remember the media, like uh, when it happened, like reports were flying around saying that they attempted to rob me. They didn't. It, it was never a robbery. It wasn't. You know, I had nothing to rob me for. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like it was. It it wasn't a robbery attempt at all. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? It was a. It was a. I don't know. An ego thing. A, I don't know. Yeah. You know what I'm right. I don't know. Bro. But, but that, with it, this, that's the thing about being successful, bro. Niggas hate you for no reason, bro. And, like, niggas can take you out for no reason. So you always got to stay prepared, bro. Either you walk around with your security, if you got the money to afford the security, or you walk around with a gay. They wanted to test me. That's, like, what, you know, I, that's yes, what I That's mean. what it was. It that's was what a I test. Mean. Like, you know, right. people see, you know, a, cer- a person admired, you know, a certain way or perceived a certain way, and they want to test it. They want to know, okay, is, what yeah. makes this? And, I, and what I think it is, you know what I mean, is it's like, why do, why do they deserve what they're, what what they they're working towards? I don't right. even have it yet. Right. You know what I mean? What you know, it, it's, it's, exactly. it's not at the same level, but I found it exists in all professions. Mm-hmm. Comedians, what we experience is people always try to test how funny. I know this is Absolutely. ridiculous, Absolutely. but people try and test how funny. They right. go, let me see if I can make him a fool. Let me see if Absolutely. I can make, so I'll go out, I'll be at a restaurant, mm-hmm. I'll be, people will do the stupidest things. Sometimes right. it's a person serving, sometimes it's a person who's at a restaurant. They go, let me act the fool in their life because I want to see if I can out fool. And I exactly. go, but that's not what I do. That's right? not what I do. Right. I've seen this happen to, you know, like soccer players. That's how it is, bro. They, someone will see them in the street and go, oh, I have a ball. Let me go throw and see if I can, yeah, let me see if I can throw it in front of the ground and and see if I can. But what's interesting is hip hop is one of the few professions and worlds where it is tied to something that is a lot more real Absolutely. and a lot more and a lot more dangerous. So Absolutely. the test that you, I'm getting the test of a fool. I'm getting the test of a joker. Mm-hmm. I'm getting the test of a gangster. Or you see, you get what I'm saying? Like that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a difficult thing about hip hop mm-hmm. that that I think a lot of people don't understand. And while I don't condone it. 
I, I don't like it, but I go, it's a very real thing. It's it is, very real. You know, it, it's very much. It's you dangerous take, to you take not know how top. real it is. It's yeah, dangerous to not know. You know what I mean? Yeah, there you go. It costs several rappers their life. Right. You know what I mean? Time and time again. So. Right. I'm going to ask you a question that, that may be ignorant, but I know a lot of people will ask it mm-hmm. because they're not familiar with the world. A lot of people would say, but the baby. Why don't you leave that world? Why don't I you did. Go, why don't you go live in another neighborhood <laughs> right. and just escape it all? There's mm-hmm. no shootings in Westchester, the baby. Right. There's no shootings in my part of Connecticut. Why don't you escape that world? What what would you how would you respond to that question? I hadn't made it out of the city yet. Okay. Yeah, all right. yeah, you well, know there what I'm you saying? Yeah, yeah, okay. no situation well, there you go. took place like I hadn't made it out of the city. But you know, to to put it into perspective, like I've been, you know, in in the middle of, of shooting incidents on Collins Avenue in Miami Beach. I hear you. You see what I'm saying? Like, you. that yeah. is where you want to move to. Like, uh-huh. it, and then that's uh-huh. what I'm saying. Like, it's like you never, you never know, you know, when right. violence is right there in front of you. Like, yeah. you just simply don't know. It's all about the type of it's day somebody's the having or the way. Yeah. It's more so about how you move throughout these different environments. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's all about. It's about knowing how to move no matter, you know, where right. you're at, you know. But when you have the the magnifying glass on you that that artists or entertainers have especially yeah. rappers right hip hop right. artists you know it just it comes with the world of of people who who feel like that is for this type of person what makes him deserve that and mm-hmm. and they immediately you know they feel entitled to what you have going on or entitled to they feel entitled to the idea of you having to go through everything they're going through in order to exist in that space. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. it's like, you know, and that's where you get situations where like people are, are willing to come, you know, approach a, a guy with his two kids and their mother in a grocery store in, in Walmart. Right. You know what I mean? With with no intent, like, you know, it it make more sense to me if they thought I had a large amount of money on me mm-hmm. or some jewelry mm-hmm. and they were mm-hmm. attempting to rob me. This this guy just died for nothing. You get what I'm saying? Because mm. his friend, and that's what I'm saying. It's about knowing how to move, and a lot of times it's about the people that you got with you. With you know you, what I'm exactly. saying? Because that guy died for his friend that night. Because his friend approached me. You know what I'm saying? His friend was the was the catalyst of the situation. Well, were the you were you were everything. you sad that he lost his life? Knowing because it feels like you have a it was, certain it was level of understanding sad. for his world. It, it was sad, but yeah, it was it was definitely sad. Was I sad? I. I can't sit here and honestly say I was sad. Uh-huh. I just, he tried I was, your I became life, more. Bro. Like, if someone tries taking your life and you take his first, bro, will you be sad? Like, nah, this is a realistic question, bro. You won't, bro. You'll be happy that you have your life, nigga. Aware of, you know, I was reminded once right. again. It was right. more like, you know, reassurance that hey, you never know what's right. gonna happen, gonna and happen. you have to, you know, yeah, be prepared. Wait. Let's, you know let's, what I mean? Had I not been prepared, had I not been, you know, uh, legally possessing a firearm, you mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, had I not been prepared, like, I would have had a gun pulled out on me, my one-year-old daughter, mm-hmm. her four-year-old brother, mm-hmm. their mother. And then I would have just been at the mercy of however they're feeling or whatever they decide to do. Right. And these are people who clearly don't don't walk you around making mind. good decisions, you mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? But that's what I would have been left with, you know. And uh, But... Ultimately, you know, most importantly, I would have been left with the responsibility to protect my family in that situation. Yo, this is... It's what you said about moving between worlds. Mm-hmm. You said you move from one world to another. Mm-hmm not realizing that you don't understand the other world right. and there's a level of ignorance that you move into it with. The baby blows up in hip hop, mm-hmm. becomes an icon, becomes somebody who's setting trends, mm-hmm. you know? You're not, you're not just a music maker, you're a trend creator. Mm-hmm. You then accelerate that growth into a world where you are now on mainstream media, the SNLs, you know, the Rolling Stones, you're on covers, you the are- The Grammys with you. The Grammys with me, You know right? what I mean? You're, you're in this world. Six nominations. Like. Doing your thing, right? And all of that comes to a halt, or a lot of it, because not all of it really, mm-hmm. a lot of it comes to a halt when one day you're on stage and in the middle of a performance, you start saying things to the crowd, mm-hmm. you know, about 
AIDS and gay people and 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 I mean you just in, as as I would say it with friends if I was talking colloquially I'd be like just shooting off at the mouth just you know right. you, you just going and that sets into effect a series of dominoes oh the, the you immediately know. you didn't show up today with HIV AIDS any of them deadly sexual transmitted diseases that'll make you die in two three weeks put a cell phone lighting it up. Fellas, lights up. Fellas, if you ain't sucking dick in the parking lot, put your cell phone lights up. Let's be real about this shit. Yeah, keep it fucking real. So let's 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 break this down in, in steps and in stages. You know, because when things are happening to us, they often happen so fast that we cannot process what is happening. Mm -hmm. And I think from the public's point of view, oftentimes people consume something and then there's another story and then you move on and there's no real processing of anything. Right. So let's start with the, the actual in incident. You're on stage, mm -hmm. you know you go into this moment with the audience where you're saying these things. Mm -hmm. What was your intention in that moment? Just to have everybody do exactly what they did, just to put their cell phone lights up and, you know, create a, a, a transitional moment in, yeah. you know, in my set, in my performance. But why, do you, it. why do you think you said what you said? Where, where do you think it came from? I mean, it, it, what I said was, I mean, it was, I, I said it so naturally and without any ill intent, but at the same time, like, you know, on hindsight, definitely. And it didn't even have to be that far behind for it to be on hindsight. Like, yeah. I learned immediately, like, you know, I'm speaking, I'm speaking the way I'm speaking, ignorant to the way that it'll be perceived with me being the person who I've grown and worked to be. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, because, you know, it's not, like I say, it's, com it's completely unintentional. Like, and not once did I even mention, you know, a gay person. Like, I didn't even say anything about a gay person I'd mention if you don't have AIDS fellas I said if you didn't uh, perform oral sex on somebody in the parking lot right. put a cell phone light up all of these are just things to you know to to somewhat get you not somewhat to very much so get you to just put a cell phone light up and which literally everybody did like I don't you know so this everybody you see now did. this is this is what I'm this is what I'm trying to get everybody to. there that's what exactly so this is what I'm, this what I'm trying to get disconnect but I'm, yes, I'm exactly. just in a space to where like I'm not right. like making excuses for it no you know no no and, like, and, I just feel like I just should have been so much more aware of the fact first of all that it's being live streamed and right, just, right and you know that this can this can potentially be well, used as is you know nowadays. used as a vessel to just to just paint my character or assassinate my character or just paint it a certain way you know what I mean and that's just it wasn't Shoot. what it was, even but in, you know in, in terms heart. of like how I respond. Even if you know in your heart, keep it to yourself, man. Keep it to yourself and your, your people, man. Protect your people if you don't want them the same way. And I think that was the most, I think that was more detrimental than what I said itself. Yeah. The way I responded to the backlash that yeah. I got. You know what I mean? The early backlash, right. the first wave right. of it. like. I kind of like took it as a joke like this got to be a joke you know what I'm uh -huh. saying like I'm like this can't be like y'all don't think like you know what I'm saying like oh this is just another attempt to you know what I mean for the media to you know to knock me off of this pedestal that uh -huh. they feel like I'm on me right. this felt minuscule to me like this didn't feel like something that needed to be you know responded to from a a place of of me being worried like I felt like I felt like the second I say no that's not what I meant like that should have been understood and boom or if you were there you get what I'm saying like I feel like they well, let's, should well let's let's take a step back then yeah. maybe and, and, and go through each thing okay if you have grown up in hip hop mm. I will be honest I will be a person who says this and maybe this will now bounce back on me but hopefully I'll be honest. not no, no no but I'll say this in hip hop there's a lot of language that is used. There are a lot of ideas that are used. That yeah, absolutely. Is like, it's like surface level. And we have to admit, is also homophobic. There's a lot of homophobia and racism. And, and I'm not trying to make you solve all of that. I want to talk right, to the baby, sure. not sure. everybody about everything. Mm -hmm. right? Because I think you're one individual who is part of something. Mm -hmm. But you, you can't deny, you know, whether it's you know, black community in Africa and in, in, in um, North America. Um, and I mean, even the white community, I mean, you know, it's oftentimes black people get singled out, mm -hmm. but I feel like homophobia is something that has been rampant throughout time and then slowly has been evolving over the past maybe two decades, really, in, in, in our lifetimes. You look mm -hmm. at from the 80s to now, there's been a huge jump and it's still not complete. Absolutely. But in, in that moment, it feels like to me, correct me if I'm wrong, but it feels like to me, you're on stage, you're saying something that feels reflexively funny and just like engaging with the audience that they, because as you said, they engage with you, right? Absolutely. Okay, they engage with you in this moment. Mm -hmm. You're having a good time. 
it does go outside of that bubble, mm -hmm. right? And as you said now, you're aware of the context outside of that. Mm -hmm. People then say to you, the baby, you're homophobic, the baby, you hate gay people, why would you parrot these ideas? You it know, was that people, part. People they speak did. out, people speak right. out. I understand you were offended. I understand that you were hurt. Nobody wants to be labeled as something that they don't see themselves as. Mm -hmm. But was there also a part of you that understood why people were saying that? At the time, at the time, no. Okay. Like I literally, I was, I was, you know, I literally did not understand. I made it clear that I yeah. didn't understand. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Like, because it's, you know, and my a videographer that works very close to me, right? He was going through just hard drives. I've been recording my entire journey since I got serious about right, it. Right. And he's like, bro, I'm watching it. And you said the same thing before at a show. Like, I, I said it before at a show, right? right. When I'm on tour, but I'm uh -huh. not the top streaming artist in the world. I'm not yeah, the top streaming yeah. rapper in the world right. at the time. You get mm -hmm, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it. I, I think that's the difference. Like, I got so many, well, I got a completely new world of people who look up to me, you yeah. get what I'm saying? Yeah. Who support no, me, you know what I mean? Who who buy my music, you know what I mean? Who, you know, they're like, they, they literally look up to, I'm probably what they put, I probably, my music has probably helped them get through certain situations, you right. know what I'm saying? Right. What have you, you know what I mean? And, uh, and I'm unaware of that, you know what I'm saying? I'm aware of it, but I'm unaware of the way that, you know, certain things that I would normally say that wouldn't even, you know, not even normally say like that's, you know. No, 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 but I think, I think look. And something I, I, that I would say and look yeah, at is like, okay, but I, no, but I mean this. And I think, I I think like we have to be, be I think we have to be honest about that. That's, why, that's why I think we won't get far, and not just the two of us, but I think in society. The reason in I don't society. think we get far with a lot of these conversations is because we're not honest enough right. yeah, about, exactly. so to say that the baby's an outlier, I think is a dishonesty. Right. But to say that what the baby did is good is not. It's like, it's it, not, for me, yeah. it becomes a symptom. It goes like, oh, shit. That thing now got exposed to the world. Right. Now it's like, okay, all right. 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 The baby showed a little bit of his world to the outside world, right. a bigger world than he normally does, mm -hmm. and now he's dealing with those ramifications. It sounds to me like you are stepping into a world where you're understanding this. Yeah, for sure. Right? Yeah, for sure. Now, for sure. But now, sure. here's the thing I want to know from you on a personal level, mm -hmm. and, and maybe it's too personal, and if it is, forgive me, but like, do you think that your experiences since then have helped you understand do you feel like you're becoming more tolerant do you be or do you think you've been more defensive like this is just you as a human being i'd love to know how you've mm -hmm. responded to the criticism or how you felt like as the baby what do you want to be more of now that you're on the other side of that you know what do i want to be more so which so because you you're saying you didn't think because you're saying like, you didn't so. think it was homophobic at the time when you said yeah, 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 this, right for sure, right for sure, and, and you said then mm -hmm. but you said now you you, you yeah you, it, it didn't even take all the way up until now like even you know over a year ago i'm like i get it you know what i'm saying like okay I, okay when i see you know like like when i see you know like how detrimental it was to my career and, and my journey and everything that I worked that hard for. Like, it, just when I see the the amount of manpower being put behind, you know what I'm saying? Like, just shining but, a, but do you see a how light on this narrative, I right. see. Like, wait, no, that was in what I say is impactful. Like, but what I'm what I'm saying what is, I mean? do you see the impact that it has? on members of the gay community who may, yeah, many of absolutely. them are fans of yours. Like, like I, do, you, do you also see that? Absolutely, like I see it, you know what I'm saying? I see it and, and you know, um, all together, like I'm ignorant to the to the fact at the time, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Like I'm ignorant to the fact. First of all, it's, you know, I, what, I didn't intend to offend anybody. That's right. the first step. And then, you know, once I did, okay, understand, okay, wait, I offended people. I'm ignorant to like, you know, how I offended them. I know you're offended, you know what I'm saying? Like That's immediately after you get what I'm That's saying? Interesting. And I know I didn't mean that, but like how much I offended them or like how impactful like you know, the something that I say is, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, at this level that I've that I've worked and that's the thing. I didn't wake up and they're like, Okay, look, you're a role model, you're the you're the you're the face of hip hop right mm -hmm. now. Like I was literally damn near the face of hip hop, you know what I'm saying? But you know, like I wasn't aware of how impactful like my words can be because I say and and you know and this is not an excuse this isn't a, a this isn't me deflecting or anything but like that, that on that stage I also said something about uh, probably a shooting or this or that mm -hmm, but that mm -hmm. wasn't you know like that's not perceived that way you right get what I'm saying so right. it's kind of like that's just me offering like an example of how you, so, somebody so, can get so, why I didn't immediately right, get so, how. So actually, let's let's you go into that because that that is interesting. Hella interesting. Do you feel like 
people take the shooting, let's say if you talk about shootings or if you talk about, you know, anything like violence or anything like that, do you think people take that with a grain of salt, but then they take the homophobia as being truth? Like yeah, they go like, yeah, oh, yeah. or and I won't even put homophobia yeah. on you. It's like the they'll truth. go like, oh, those statements, they go like, that's your truth. But then the other stuff is you just messing around. Do you, is that what you say you feel? Yeah. Absolutely. That's Definitely. what I know. I that's mean, it's, truth, you know, I'm a bro. walking it's, example of that. It's mm-hmm. not you know only to him, like, bro. You know, um, I'm not gonna say nothing, but it's just the truth, bro. Like, taking someone's life is crazy, but after they uh, they just say something weird, bro. It's okay for me to say these types of things, but this is but hell no. That, like, that's I crazy. wouldn't dare so- right even say anything remotely close to it now, like in private or public. Like, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like. You know, my entire world was shifted by that. You know what I mean? The public knows oftentimes how it wants to flog somebody. The mm-hmm. public knows how it wants to punish somebody. Right. I find the public doesn't often know how it wants to reconcile with somebody. Right. I would like to know from your perspective, A, do you feel like people engaged with you on a level, and this is like everybody from inside the industry, from outside, do you feel like people engaged with you on a level human to human where they helped you understand? And then B, do you feel like there was ever a path to redemption for you to like change and grow? Or do you feel like it was the baby, you're cut off, this is who you are and you're done? The 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 latter of the two, for sure. The, like, the, I feel like it was more so like, a, no, you're done, you know what I'm saying, type of thing. Now, the difference is like, you know, you got one or two decisions to make to let, you know what I mean, a mistake define you or to, mm-hmm. you know, put in the work necessary to, you know, change the narrative bits and, and bits and pieces at a time. You know right. what I'm saying? Like it is what it is. It's you know, I don't I don't feel entitled to and this this goes back to earlier in our conversation, it's a beautiful thing. I was always taught to not never look for sympathy, never look to make somebody feel sorry for you. Yeah. Like so that just goes to like my reaction to it it taking, you know, the turn that it did, you know, the turn for the worst that it did, like I have had it instilled in me that, you know, you don't make people feel sorry for yeah. you. You know yeah. what I mean? No matter what you go through. No, I, no, I, hear, can, I hear you there. That can, that yeah. can, you know, almost like heighten, you know, people can look at that as ignorance or, or uh, arrogance as opposed to me just being, uh, uh, you know, the, the person that I was raised to be. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. That I have, to, I have to go through experiences like that to understand, okay, look, sometimes you, you might need to, do that immediately uh-huh. you get what I'm saying uh-huh. I know that now uh-huh. yeah I learned something new in a way it's like you, that you, day. you took the whipping essentially oh yeah you for sure like I'm gonna right like when I when I used to get whoopings I couldn't cry it doesn't right. stop until you it's right. stop crying you, you keep crying boom boom but it stop crying like, right. so this is what you know like when when I get a whoop I got take my lick and I carry on like you get what I'm saying like that's what I do and in that situation that was looked at as a he doesn't care. He's that much worse of a person like that yeah. type of thing. You get what I'm saying? When it's really like, you know, I care enough to keep going. Like, uh, that's what somebody has to understand. Like, that's, you know, it's very few that care the way I care. Well, that's, that's, well, that's like what I, that, that's what that I was... That ends people. Like, they'll never be sitting across right. the table from and that's, you. Exactly. And that's, that's, you that's actually, saying? you see, it's funny you said that because that's exactly what I said um, to the team. As I said, what intrigues me about the baby is this. He has every opportunity to stay immersed in a world that will fully accept everything that he has done. Absolutely. And yet he keeps on insisting on trying to both explain, reconcile, mm-hmm. and deal with what has happened. And that, and that, that intrigues me. And so now you've explained that to me as a person. Be- before, before I let you go, though, um, I'd love to know where you go from here. What now? You know, you, you know summer came around. Mm-hmm. You, you had a song on the on the Billboard Hot mm-hmm. 100. You know you're still making good music. You're mm-hmm. still a fantastic artist. Thank you so much. You know I hope for you as a human being, genuinely, that you'll continue to grow. I do think you should look into therapy. No, for from sure. From one brother to another. No, for sure. I for promise sure. you'll change. And for it's your something kids. I've been on. I've, I've so been, can I? You know, I'll, 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 I'll share this with you real quick before mm-hmm. before I ask you about the future. Is um, so my my mother was shot by my stepfather. Right. She survived. Thank God. But. One of the biggest things I regretted, and I always talk to my mom about this, is the fact that myself and my two younger brothers never went to therapy to deal with it. Right. My youngest brother was, I don't know, maybe six years old when it happened. Mm -hmm. Mistakenly, my mom thought he doesn't fully process and understand it. How old were you? 
Uh, I was 20, I was in my 20s. Okay. I was in my mm-hmm. 20s. Um, maybe even th- touching 30, yeah, but 20s, I think, late 20s. And then the, the middle brother, the one who drove my mom to the hospital, he was, he was a teenager at the time. And one of, honestly, one of my greatest regrets is that we didn't know at the time how powerful and, and impactful therapy could be in helping us not just deal with, but unearth some of the traumas that we hadn't dealt with. For sure. You know, some of the angers, some of the fears, some mm-hmm. of the, you know? Mm-hmm. And it, it, don't get me wrong, it's a scary thing, it's a crazy thing. And also therapy has a stigma attached to it, mm-hmm. you know? But I personally, as a human being, I would encourage it for you, and, and especially your kids, because you seem like the kind of dad who wants them to have 10 times oh, what you sure. had, you for know? Sure. You, want, you want her to have all the A's. Yes. I honestly believe that. And so I'd love to know where you go from here. What now for the baby? So professional with me, uh, the next step would definitely be venturing into film, into film and television for sure. That's something I've been passionate about um, from the get go, really from the beginning, maybe yeah. even before the music. You know what I'm saying? And, and daughter, you know what baby, I daughter, what I bring. It's like the same thing that gives me somewhat of I won't even say the upper hand, but a different perspective or an interesting perspective that can't be found anywhere else is my mm-hmm. life experiences that mm-hmm. I that I've been able to you know what I mean navigate through. And uh, these are like a lot of the things that I implement in like my music videos from day one, you know, all the way until now to where I have other artists and major labels reaching out to me to direct videos for, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean, artists that are signed to major labels and, and things of that nature. You know, I got people who are, who have like, you know, the, the top rated, you know, television shows and, you know, uh, filmmakers like there. They can't wait for me to, you know, give them, you know, what I got going on inside of this brain right, of mine, right. you know. So that's what I'm on. And not only that, like just solidifying a, a, a safe space for my kids to, you know, somewhat because they're I mean, my kids have pretty much been born into this. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like just they've been around it like my daughter. My daughter can direct, uh, like, a, she, you let her make a TikTok, like, the, her perspective <laughs> is just, like, she's amazing, right. you know what I mean? She's musically inclined, like, you know, like, it's it's just amazing, like, she's an amazing, amazing little girl, um, but it's just, you know, making sure that, that while I'm here, which I've been doing from day one, but, you know, literally, like, solidifying, like, you know, a position for her to do, because she's grown old enough you know for me to begin to see the things that she loves early on mm-hmm. and that she you know i got something very very special coming up with me and my daughter um that i just know i don't even care how the world feels about it like because she's in love with the idea and i'm in love with it and mm-hmm. you know we get to do you know we get to do something you know at a high level you know together right so that's gonna be beautiful like i'm i'm so excited about that so excited right. about that therapy you know what i mean that's definitely something conversation like this is therapeutic when i sit across from people like you you know i already know okay boom that's gonna be a therapy session ahead like <laughs> like i love it you know what i mean like i just love people who have compelling conversation and who just yeah. come from a place especially you like the the more i talk to you and just knowing like your you know your real life experiences and you know things that you've been through you can understand my perspective perspective and you know my setup as a person and my character from a place that you know a lot of people just simply can't yeah like I always felt like that's my purpose like I feel like the way my career has played out thus far is that's exactly how it was supposed to happen like right because even at the time like you know with with this and and me as a person like that that's very big the therapy and just finding an outlet for all of the feelings and and emotions and experiences i've suppressed this entire time yeah because even during the fact like okay i'm the top streaming artist in the world i'm um you know one of the one of the like go-to live performers you know what i'm saying yeah definitely like top of the top of the you know what i mean Mm -hmm. but you know i also my my brother just killed himself in front of his daughter you know what i mean just months before then you right. know what i'm saying left four kids right you know what i'm saying so it's like it, i'm i'm and i'm the head of the family like mm-hmm. i'm responsible for so many people you know what i mean emotionally financially right. you know what i mean like i'm i'm just responsible for so much and so many people and this is me but this is also still me being a person who grew up you know and and having to suppress emotions feelings these types of things and having it instilled in me to never let anyone feel sorry for you yeah you get what i'm saying never let anyone feel sorry for you so that was like the main thing and you know and and i saw my brother like looking for sorrow like 
and on on a live stream just you know seconds before ending the live stream and killing itself you know what i'm saying so it's like you know this these are this is my world as i'm going on that stage at rolling loud you get what i'm saying Mm -hmm. but i still went on the stage gave a hell of a performance right up until you know that life-changing moment that pivotal moment career-changing moment Mm life-changing as well you know what i'm saying but this is like you know i understand even with that like my reaction to that because okay now it's like they're telling like it's like they're making me take the lid off of that jar that I've just suppressed all these things in. Right. You know what I mean? If right. I'm if I'm gonna tap into that space and I just feel like, you know, the world just got just got like, you know, the 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 bad end of a of a ticking time bomb, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. That's what I was. Like I right. was just a ticking time bomb the entire time. So I feel oh, like is, the way man, that situation played out, man, Jack it was Fox, it was, sure it was healthy. Can. It was so needed because I'm such a hot commodity, like and I'm such a hustler, a workaholic, that I'm just, I'm using my hustle to just, you know, to help me suppress. I'm just staying busy to help me suppress all of these feelings, you know right. what I'm saying? and like, not dealing with what's happening underneath. Absolutely, and what's happening underneath is very real. This is, right. you know, this is, is, this is as real as it gets. That's my worst nightmare. Like, it's never been about me, it's my people. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've lived through my worst nightmare while being the, the at the time hottest artist in the world top streaming rapper in the world right, right. not just you know what i'm saying like no, man, you know so, so, so it's it's yeah you know my plate was full but i'm not one to complain i'm gonna grab my fork my knife and my spoon i'm gonna eat you know what right. i'm saying like that's what it is especially when eating makes you forget about you know what i'm saying yeah, no I you hate, know the, but, the but pain as, of, yeah. of the stomach ache but, I, but as, I, as i say man from from one human being to another mm-hmm. from one brother to another i i hope you take a moment to acknowledge the stress, the pressure, the Absolutely. environment, everything that it comes with, and know that, honestly, maybe, and I hope you don't make me regret this. I'll be honest with you. From right. me to you, mm-hmm. don't make me regret this moment, the baby. Got you. I'm rooting for you. No, for sure. I, appreciate I hope the best that. for you. I'm not the type of person. Be, I hope you'll I become need. an icon. I hope you'll become somebody who makes the world a better place. I will. You know, mm-hmm. I'm rooting for you. Don't make me look bad. I got you. People are going to play this interview and be like, I got he you. vouched for him. For sure. You know, I, I think you. you're beyond everything. Mm-hmm. I think you are truly someone who can rise to the greatest heights. We've seen your work. We've seen what you're passionate about. Appreciate you're it. an amazing parent. Keep doing your thing. Mm-hmm. Avoid the guns. That's just my personal opinion. Yeah, for sure. I, you know, I, that's, no. I mean, that's I just me. Them. I hate guns. That's just me. Gun, that's just me. I hate guns. Yeah. But I appreciate you, my dude. Thank you for the time. I appreciate you having me, man. Thank you so much. You know what I mean? Thank you. Shout out to Trevor Noel for this podcast, man. Yo, we've been here, bro. But without further ado, make sure y'all hit that subscribe button, turn on your post notification, and we lit. What? We lit.